Hey y'all, Jay Wilson here from Onyx Reporting. Um, sorry about the repost, apparently the first time I did this recording, the audio didn't get captured. So I'm gonna go over the Time Extender um, Data Discovery Hub project model um, as a companion to the blog post I'm doing about the Dynamics NAV on-prem and the Dynamics CRM in the cloud integration into a data warehouse demo. Ah, that's a lot of words, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so I'm going to open up my Data Discovery Hub project here, and let's take a look at how it's laid out. Now, I've done a little bit of kind of integration already just to kind of show you guys what it looks like. But um, as we open up the base project, again, as I said in the blog, it's divided into three lever layers, the ODS, the Operational Data Store, the DSA, the Data Staging Area, and the MDW, Master Data Warehouse. Now, of course, you can change these names, but let's talk about why it's laid out like this. So the data store um, is designed to be one place where you gather all the information that you're going to use in your analytics into a single database. Um, and that, I think, is a departure from a couple different models where you'll see you know, some solutions will allow you to just build a cube or build a reporting um, tool directly pointed at, well, I'll have you know, a data source that's pointing at NAV, I'll have another data source that's pointing at CRM, another data source that's pointing at um, Google Analytics. Um, so a lot of reporting tools avoid taking all of the data and pull it into one into one database. But the advantage of the operational data store model is that by extracting all of the data that I need and storing it in a SQL database, I reduce the number of times that I have to touch the source system to extract it. Right, so if you can imagine I have a million records or say three years of history in my CRM database, when I run my analytics, because it's stored in my ODS, um, I don't have to go and query CRM to get the data. I don't have that weight. Okay, now speaking of the CRM connector here under data sources, um, one thing I really appreciate that Time Extender has done with their automation tool is they've built out. Um, a slew of adapters. Now these adapters will connect to different types of databases. You can see the top couple are Dynamics um, connectors, um, but I can also connect to Salesforce and under data sources you can see I can connect to a host of non-Microsoft SQL data sources as well. Um, but what's particularly compelling about the CRM adapter is that, um, especially because I'm you know, pulling data from the cloud, instead of having to do a lot of coding to write to an API and then set up a structure for saving the data that comes out of that API, all I have to provide is my discovery URL and my Office 365, 365 credentials. Um, and the, the Time Extender's CRM adapter does the rest of the work for me. You can see here it's read in all of the um, entities that exist in CRM and for the purposes of this demonstration we're going to just take a look at the the um, account and contact entities um, but even within that you know you you just extract the data that you want right this is classic um, e uh, the extract phase and from ETL and, and classic data warehousing um, the nav 2015 data source is on-prem um, but you can see here it's not just a straight, you know, what is my SQL database um, and then read the metadata from the database. It's a little bit more robust than that. Um, instead of having to select the customer table or the contact table for each company that exists in NAV, right? If you've seen SQL, the SQL database, there's one table for each customer table. They're all rolled into one. Right, that's part of what the adapter is doing behind the scenes for us. It's saying, hey, I've got three or four or five different companies. Let's just roll it into one um, table called contact. Choose the fields you want and you know, extract that data into the data store. So here's our, our extraction in the operational data store. Again, there's no transformations going on here. There's no work going on here. All we're doing here is extracting and loading the data. Um, and then when we go into the staging area, you'll see this is a separate database. 
And in the staging area, this is, you know, I said this is where the, the data scientists, the data analysts, this is our playground. We can do our data discovery, as it were. We can start looking at mashing up. Well, if I've got a table called, you know, the contact table from CRM, how does that relate to the account table in CRM? And we can see here, um, I've described what the relations are um, between the, the account table and the contact table. And then I've also said, oh, well, I've got this contact table in NAV. How am I going to mash that up to the CRM contact table? Because they don't both have the same field account ID. Um, I made a cheeky, you know, relation. I just said, well, if the emails are the same, then they're probably related. Um, and you might need a, you know, you might use uh, fuzzy lookups or something like that in SSIS to get a more precise um, relationship. I just went with emails. And then once you, again, once you've done that discovery element, you said, okay, these are how these two tables are related. Now we can start saying, oh, well, I'm going to throw the nav customer number into the nav to the CRM contact table. Again, I've defined what is my relationship between the two objects or between the two fields, right? Um, and I'll, again, to start mashing up data from different tables all into the same place and staging. And I call this my playground because, you know, I might say, oh, well, I think the relationship is email. And then further on down the road, as as I start bringing in more and more data, I might say, oh, I might have this other relationship between this data and another data source that I want to explore. All I have to do is pull in my data from the operational data store one more time, and I can start playing with it without fundamentally overhauling the entire project. This ability to play and it is, you know, it serves a business function. We're seeing that trend where we're saying, you know, it's not enough to just look at data from one database or two databases. We need to start see, creating a holistic view of data from all of my different data sources. We have that opportunity when you separate the data extraction and the data transformation into two separate databases. And then, of course, you load all that data into the master data warehouse. Now, if you look over here on the right from data movement, you'll see I didn't move all of the fields. I've only moved a couple of the fields. And that's because I've applied business logic. Um, let's take a look at the business logic that I applied to account name here. So um, let's go back to my staging. And we'll look at the nav contact table. Sorry, we'll look at this. That's not staging. Okay, to get the CRM account name, I mean, yes, I have done that conditional lookup where I'm grabbing the account name from NAV, but then I applied additional business logic here, and I said, you know what? The NAV customer name is probably right. And I say that because I fill out all of my invoices using data stored in NAV. And when I think about, okay, well, how did I fill in the CRM account name? Well, I may have read it off a business card. I may have synced it from LinkedIn. Who knows how that data got into my CRM system? I don't, you know, as a business process, I'm not required to keep the account name accurate in CRM. But for sure, because I'm filling out invoices, I'm going to give precedence to NAV, right? So again, what I'm trying to demonstrate here is that in your staging area, you can apply business logic as you do your mashups. Um, and then once you get into the master data warehouse, you only transfer the data that has been cleansed and governed and, you know, maintained. Um, and you can ignore the, 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 the data that you used to get you to that point. But what I really like about this model of separating extraction and then transformation and then, you know, loading for presentation. Um, what I really appreciate about this model is that you still have that auditing trail. At every point you can go back and say, okay, in the operational data store, what was the data as it was extracted from the source system? And we can see it there, pristine, untouched, no filters, no transformations. Then as we move into the staging area, can we can we can clearly see um, what business logic was applied to the data and how did those transformations occur, right? In my other blog post, I talked about the um, raw table versus the valid table. 
And then again, in, this, in the master data warehouse, there's no transformations going on. We're just doing a straight transfer of data from staging to the master data warehouse, only the stuff that we need to see in order to have that single version of the truth that we're aiming for in all of our data warehousing projects. Okay, in any event, that is the end of my presentation on the data discovery hub. I really wanted to talk into what, what is the discovery element of this project? Um, how does this play into that trend we're seeing where people are pulling in data from multiple data sources? How does it enhance and support you know, the conventions that we've learned in traditional data warehousing, right? I think I covered all of that in my presentation today. My name is Jay Wilson from Onyx Reporting. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up on email or whatever. I'm actually in Seattle to do work with the Time Extender crew. I'm super excited about that. And I'll be sure to blog about that um, as the week progresses. Thanks so much for joining me. Cheers.